Okay, here is where I show you how to tell if an engine is built too tight or just right. I'm zooming in, this is the cam case right there. You can see that if you look real close, you can see how that pinion gear actually moves a little bit. <clears throat> And uh, that'll let you know that the engine at least isn't built way too tight on that side. You, uh, you should have end plate, but I have the primary drive sprocket on, so that cork seal uh, diminishes any of that. This, uh, this engine, when I first inspected it, I couldn't get that to move, so I put a dial indicator on that little spigot sticking out <clears throat> that goes towards the oil pump and that dial indicator moved ten thousandths of an inch and <clears throat> also the bearings were all too tight so I don't know how much it was out of balance because when I pulled I tried to pull that primary off they had the uh, too, too long a uh, key in there and it started to gnarl up my puller so I had to take the whole flywheel assembly apart from the left side of the case and uh, do it that way. Sorry about the inability to focus but um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the top end on here one thing I did notice when I took this apart these pistons were in backwards and this is how they looked after running on a test stand, oh, I don't think for very long. But the aluminum isn't damaged. I'm just going to put these in, and I'm sure it'll be fine. <clears throat> Another note, too, on a piston, the very bottom edge, I can't focus on this thing, sorry. But the bottom edge, you want a bit of a taper. So when the oil when it oils, it, uh, it doesn't take the oil out of the case. What I'm doing is I am shimming the oil pump. The oil pump return on an Indian has got two gears. This is the early style pump. And uh, sometimes those gears protrude from the housing. That gear will stick up a little bit or actually both. They, they need to be the same height. And uh, when you buy a gasket kit, I got these from Stephanie up at Chuck Miles in Sloansville, New York, and she gave me a pretty good assortment. You get all different size gaskets. This one's nine thousandths. This one I think is four. I measured it, I forgot already, who knows. These white ones are about one. Uh, and right now, so far, I have uh, seven eight thousandths worth of shims that's as high as I've ever went and I think that'll work because it almost worked before when I got it real tight it got a little stiff and the importance of that is if that's not as good as it can be you're gonna wet some and that's that's gonna cause you all kinds of problems another thing too is cam play these shafts and this you can't say it should easily move in and out they ought to have some play, five, fifteen thousandths, whatever. Uh, they, they cannot bind up. Uh, another engine I recently did, the guy shimmed those like he was building some Sportster. Maybe, maybe he was a Sportster mechanic and, you know, them guys are just nuts. But anyhow, they need to move freely in and out. And at all times, the motor should roll over pretty smooth. When you put your front sprocket on, it's going to bind it up a little bit because you're compressing that you're compressing that cork another thing is right here in back of this is a felt seal and that felt seal needs to be soaked in oil overnight before you put it on I feel that's pretty important uh, notice how the baffles are in this engine I go either way on that Homer Sumter a man from Bayshore, New York, who was my mentor, who helped me build Indian motors, actually taught me. 
Spent a lot of time with that guy. He was a very nice guy to me. And um, he was a big believer in those baffles. We had a one time spent hours and hours machining the cases on some kind of apparatus that reminded me of a brake drum cutter. I had to sit there and pull on a fan belt like I was in a 1700s knitting a sweater. And we got those perfectly straight. That guy, he, uh, he made sure stuff was perfect. And uh, we're, uh, we're coming at it. I should have this pump on me and my buddy Al. We were gonna put the top end on today. We'll see how his time frame works out. But we're coming along pretty well. Okay. My first YouTube video, Beware. I'm trying to give you guys helpful hints. And uh, any questions, maybe I'll post my email address on the site. And we'll see you later. Bye.